Good evening and welcome. Welcome to the realities of homeschooling. This is a contact webinar in partnership with Bringing Us Together and presented by Katie Clark and Karen Hickton. Welcome to this contact webinar. If there is a technical hitch, please do bear with us. Those of you joining by PC, laptop, tablet or smartphone should now be able to see this introduction slide. As there are so many attendees, you will all remain muted throughout. You can ask a question of us tonight by using the question mark on your GoTo software. If you can't see this, try moving your mouse if you're on a laptop or tapping your screen if you're on a touchscreen device. Throughout the evening, we'll be gathering the questions which will form our workshop, which will be running on June the 17th. We're not going to be answering the questions as we go along, but we will aim to produce an FAQ with any questions that come out of tonight. Contact will be gathering the questions as they come in. You should also see a hand icon, which you can use to raise your virtual hand. And you should see this next to the question mark icon. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> Hi, Karen. <laughs> I'm Katie. And I'm from Calderdale, which is a very posh word for Halifax and district. And you can see a picture of my six amazing children, my husband and my mum and dad, um, who we haven't seen actually because of lockdown for about three months now. Um, I'm a contact to families parent associate and a trainer. And I also have worked with parents across the country for well over 20 years. And I'm the co-founder of Bringing Us Together, who are holding this webinar tonight. And yeah, and we're also uh, a busy household, especially in lockdown, and we're host parents to refugees. So we have lots of young people who come and live with us, but not currently because of lockdown. Karen. Hi, Karen. Um, so I was a trauma nurse for 15 years and that was um, down in the Midlands around Leicestershire and it was during that time that I met James. So you can see a picture of my two boys there. So James is my adopted son and James um, was born with global development delay and idiopathic scoliosis. So he was a wheelchair user for quite some time. Um, and then my youngest, so he's 19 now, and my youngest son, the very cheeky Lennon there, who's now nine. So I left um, nursing around 2014, and since then I've been working with Women's Aid and other women's um, focused charities. I also work with Katie and work with um, people who live with high-end anxiety. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. Great, and we're so pleased to be with you all tonight. Mm. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yep. I'm going to just switch this off for one minute. Then I... So, everyone's lockdown hair is welcome. Yep. Who's in their PJs? I've got my hot water bottle. I'm, I've got my PJ bottoms on. <laughs> I've got my PJs on. Yeah, we're all ready to go. Do you see mine as well? Hot water bottle, cup of tea, yeah, ready to go, and my messy hair. This is how I work all my meetings now, just the top half. Okay, so we are stronger together. I will get rid of me so I, you don't lose focus. Um, we've got this. We're all in this together. We are all unique. And we understand whatever you do is the best. And often we forget that even on those very difficult days that we have, we have done the best we could with what we had on that day. And we are doing really well. We're 12 weeks in and it's really difficult, but I think we're doing phenomenally well. And you're here to watch this webinar and that's great. Thank you so much. And everything you share with us is really valuable and important and will help us to um, form our future workshops and supporting other families with what we do. So thank you. You okay there, Katie? I am. Yeah, everybody deserves a medal for being here. And it's unimaginable what we all are dealing with during lockdown. Um, we might have had sleepless nights. We have had been trying to homeschool during the day. 
and actually getting to this webinar when you're looking after children and doing everything else and we'll be talking about that as we go along some of our challenges that we're facing you all deserve a medal we know that being a parent of a disabled child is one of the hardest jobs of all so this is our congratulations to you you deserve a medal you are awesome now as we run through the session we're going to be recognizing and celebrating our achievements in lockdown we're going to hear from others their difficulties and challenges we're going to be understanding our own expectations around homeschooling we're going to look at ways of resourcing ourselves understanding our emotions and sharing some creative solutions to homeschooling that families across the country have told us that they're doing so let's take a few deep breaths it might be the first time actually today that you've been able to take a few deep breaths so just breathe in and think about as you breathe out your greatest achievement during lockdown if you can use the raise your hand symbol on your screen if you feel you've achieved things that you would never have thought you could have done a year ago so thinking have a deep breath think about some of those achievements that you've done during lockdown and there will be many you may not realize it but think about and then raise your hand symbol on the screen if you feel you've achieved something that you and a year ago we never thought we would be here karen how about you what's your greatest achievement during lockdown so i've had some mini wins um and and i do have quite a few scattered mini wins which have been really good to um because i have found lockdown quite challenging in, in many ways However, I think the biggest one is actually finding a bit of stillness, which um, which has been something that I don't normally feel because I've always had jobs that are extremely high end adrenaline. My all my hobbies are very adrenal, so everything I do is very sort of rush, 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 and everything crammed in my diary. But obviously, I've kind of been um forced into this peculiar pause where suddenly is was what's the point of having a diary um try and actually fill time and i i found it really difficult in the beginning i was very activated very restless um and a little bit frustrated and that's just because i wasn't used to being that um it's not slow um but used, not used to being able to have that stillness and that presence. So if there's one thing, one of my biggest wins in this lockdown is that I felt really present um, and I've really enjoyed feeling that actually. And I'd like to think that once um, we transition out of this, that I can keep some of that presence and, and keep some of that importance as well. When we asked on Facebook and are bringing us together, Facebook page, what were your achievements? Here are some of the things that people said. I'm learning lots of new things I didn't know about. My son now eats vegetables. It took me 14 years to get him to go eat good food. My son is signing extra words. My husband is furloughed and he's taking on the cleaning, shopping and is sharing the responsibility. My daughter is using her iPad again, which she refused to use in almost three years. I have quality time with my kids and we're doing lots of walks together. We're able to appreciate the simple things in life. H now has showers, but now he wants three to four a day. Victims of our own success. Oh, not losing my mind. Not strangling the other half. Enjoying not rushing to pointless appointments doing things that I never had time for as always working and rushing around, lots of baking and cooking. I grew peas for the first time, talking late nights with no alarm clocks. Hmm. And this just is like my daily routine. This is the lockdown commute. <laughs> Mine's stopping the dog from barking. Yeah. And a lot I haven't been rubbishing in an old craft box because I'm not very good at arts and crafts, 
but we have been rummaging in old photograph boxes. Okay. Yeah. Banana well, bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've actually become very, very good at baking in lockdown, um, and also very good at eating everything that I bake. Um, <laughs> We're so not good at baking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have made we have tried so hard to make bread and we're not good at baking no no yeah it's, it's interesting when I'm talking about how much more sort of present and um sort of slower that my life feels at the moment which is something I'm not used to but I have I do tend to fill my day with lots of cleaning um my house is constantly sparkling because it's one of those things that um i found actually really quite therapeutic and when i start cleaning kids leave me alone <laughs> otherwise they have to get involved in it you see great so i think a lot of you looking at this will be checking in and you'll be part of that lockdown ongoing commute as well as the achievements, we asked families, what are some of your COVID-19 challenges? And I'm sure that those of you listening to this will be able to relate the stress of homeschooling, which is why we're here tonight, the added chores, the extra responsibilities, no respite, large additional expenses, boredom and isolation, worries and fears, big decisions around returning or not returning to school, Shielding, that's what our family are doing. Those not shielding but following the same guidelines, hospital appointments that are being cancelled, toothache and no dentist. I know quite a few people have got really bad toothache. The online shopping slots, no physio for our children, lack of mental health services. Some of us are tearing our hair out, and some of us, like Karen and I, are still in our pajamas all day, and we're delivering this in our pajamas. Those employing personal assistants who are not coming in, the list is endless. You are awesome. Karen, this is your thing. Maths, oh, how do you feel looking at this? You see, I find this image, and every time you put it up, even though we have a bit of a laugh about it, it's really stressful. So one of the challenges that I've personally found um, in this period of time is home education actually i'm um dyslexic and i'm dyscalculus so i find it i found schooling very difficult um when i was younger so obviously it, it, it would bring quite a lot of stuff up but i've managed to put it all aside and kind of forget about that in a way um until lennon started bringing home uh, lennon started doing his, his maths um, and English and his sort of core subjects at home and he's looking for support and help. And it brought all that back up and it was really, really stressful because I can't do anything with that. Um, so the way things are taught these days, I didn't get it when it, the way it was taught back in the day when I was at school, but the way things are taught these days, it's very different to how, um, how I was taught. So. I've had to spend quite a lot of time looking at YouTube, asking other parents, and it, it, was it was really challenging to admit that. I did have to have a conversation with Lennon and he was amazing. So actually he teaches me quite a bit of the stuff now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was one of my biggest challenges. It was really emotional to have to become a, a, a teacher at home. Um, so I had to change that mindset because I, I, I was really stressed by that, so yeah. I'm not a teacher. Yeah, I can't even do simple maths. I don't normally do this. I'm rubbish at maths. In fact, that last diagram, Karen, I can't, I, I can't fathom it at all. Yeah, you see, I'd say my superpower is about being a parent, about being mama. My superpower is not being a teacher. That's why I never was one. <laughs> Some of the challenges around homeschooling. I often forget to say, I don't know how to do this. We're trying as a family to home educate, but we are totally exhausted. I was upset in the beginning with the language that's used in the curriculum. It's all so different. Mm. I'm a full-time juggler. I keep dropping the balls, but every so often I keep them going. My child can't be on their own. I'm not sleeping and I can't focus on being a teacher in the day. I'm getting mixed messages from school and other parents, and we can't be everything to everyone. We're not following the pen and paper model, learning often, 
pens and papers were out of the window quite fast, literally in some cases. It's the least fun I have ever had, and I'm a teacher. John can't cope with it, and neither do I. My child is missing out socially, he's missed out on his residential, and he's had no teacher input for his GCSEs. I work from home, it's been so hard, I feel it's unjust. The online offer is poor. As soon as I received the bite-sized link, I just gave up. We have one computer to share with all our family members. No respite, it's all the time and I'm panicking. So just very briefly, I'm not going to go into the whole psychology, um, obviously, so just gonna spend a few minutes on this, but when we're talking to parents who, who sort of hit those emotional walls or they say phrases like, I just don't have the headspace, um, it's, it's, you know, I really struggle to make it a priority and I know I should. So you can hear lots of guilt coming out in the words that they use. Just briefly, just explaining this, um, do you want to just flip over actually, Katie, onto the next yeah. one a little bit clearer? So in order for us to feel safe, to grow and be creative, which is what um, it is, what we need to be if we're mentoring or if we're teaching or if we're, if we're homeschooling, whatever kind of wording feels comfortable for you to use there, um, but feel comfortable and kind of healthily strive to achieve, we have to have certain baseline needs fulfilled. Otherwise, if our baseline needs are not fulfilled, then our learning is interrupted. Um, so same with our children. So it's hard to absorb information. It's hard to learn. It's hard to engage. If our baseline needs need to not be met. It's hard as the, the adult here to deliver when our baseline needs to not be met. So our creative um, mind can often be interrupted. So this hierarchy of needs just explains and just really briefly looking at the first couple of um, of, of layers here and we fluctuate constantly through the day sometimes hour by hour sometimes minute by minute we can be okay one minute we could be not okay the next minute but um level one if we just look at level one in order to move up we've got to have the 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 one below um fulfilled we can't be in a deficit so level one must be achieved and this is um, our physiological needs here and one of the things that can be really challenged is sleep um so sleep deprivation we're not getting respite we may have um needs to fulfill through the nights um i'm not a great sleeper to be fair so there are often nights where where i don't sleep and i can be really challenged with my patients the next day um so and then so if we've got that if, if we're fulfilled on that level then we can move up to safety needs but if we look again right now for a lot of people not everybody but for a lot of people their safety and security is being really challenged um, and that could be a threat of losing their jobs it could be about the uncertainty we've had a lot of uncertainty in the beginning i don't think it's been that congruent um with the messages that we've had and the, the, the strategies that we've had top down for us to follow as, um, as from a country to a society down to, to our communities. So within that, uh, I, I know some people have really felt they haven't had any edges or any boundaries to lean on. Um, and that uncertainty can create anxiety. So what can happen that with that anxiety then again it's affecting our ability to rest affecting our ability to sleep so we're not feeling the the ability to prioritize or sit with um having a few hours in the day where we're delivering that kind of creative presence and that kind of creative teaching and then if you're just briefly looking at belongingness and, and love needs as it says there a lot of us have, have had our relationships interrupted as well we can't um we can't meet our family we can't have that um sensory rich presence that communication we can do it on zoom and i get that we can do it on the phone but there is something so um empowering so giving um when we're sitting in a room with somebody or when we're meeting somebody um or when we're going out for days out and just having those breaks so for for a lot of us you know we, we've had 12 weeks without our nearest and dearest in our lives and that can be really challenging as well so 
we've got lots of different threads that are poking us at the moment and we're not always kind of connecting the dots with that so we can feel overwhelmed or we're just we're just not in a position to um feel like we can deliver that kind of homeschooling and then what that can be left with is we can be left with feeling guilty and guilt is a bottomless pit I mean we can just go on and on in in layers of guilt um and then you know we can just really struggle with that so I was with the different aspects of stress coming in um you can really see why some people I can see why some people are just sitting there some of our parents are sitting there going my head's not in it I don't know what I'm doing. I don't feel creative. I don't know how to deliver this. Um, and you can kind of see them really quite overwhelmed with that. And a lot of it is because we're really challenged on on our needs as as individuals as well. So that just explains sometimes. And just by knowing that, just by being able to see this and recognize it, sometimes it's about just checking in with ourselves and, and acknowledging, because we, we're very good at putting ourselves at the bottom of the pile, but sometimes just going, am I okay right now? Yes, no, okay, I'm not okay. What does that look like? What does that mean? What, what do I need right now? Um, and sometimes it just takes a, a bit of adjustment or acknowledgement. So if we acknowledge, I feel really stressed about this particular thing then we can address that um i used to be somebody that was very over generalized so if something was going wrong in my day the whole day was going wrong and actually once i learned to be not so dramatic um, and actually learned to recognize that if there was one main thing that i was really stressed about and i could put a boundary around that then i could resource my way through that or i could literally pick it up put it aside and go i will deal with that later and that seemed to give me enough headspace. And that is literally one of the things that I'm applying now um, because I'm, I'm working from home and um, I'm also trying to homeschool in my way. I do it very differently to, to many other people and I'm okay with that. Um, but with the job that I do outside of this, I do hold quite a bit of stress and sometimes it can play on me, but by literally just going, I am gonna deal with that between three and four this afternoon, then. I'm able to put that boundary around it and move on. And I seem to be able to fulfill that. And then I feel much freer um, in order to then be with Lennon and be with James and deliver what it is that they need from me at that point. Um, and some days it is about going, we've got half an hour today to do maths. That's all we're gonna do on that. Or we've got an hour to do it. So it's about being realistic as well. So every time facing something unique and that's the thing um so we've got some examples on here um from some of our parents i'm on furlough and i don't know if i have a job at the end of it after this well they that in itself is really stressful and challenges those baseline levels that we have i worry financially about food on the table and our safety and and if they're worried about that then there may be a challenge around their rent or mortgage or housing Quarantine, shielding, vulnerable, protecting, social distancing, that all that wording that's constantly going around and influencing um, how we think and feel, and it, it's kind of anxiety inducing wording. Um, people without um, disabled loved ones just don't get shielding. We can see people that are, have, have kind of pushed those boundaries that have been set and it can be quite frustrating others aren't following the rules um, i'm living on the edge with high intensity i need help but don't like to rely on others a lot of us um we do sit in that camp um we're very used to doing so much of it on our own and we're very used to being capable but this is a quite a peculiar time um and it's and so it's hard to come out of our normal behaviors and change that and, and become reliant on others in a more creative way. Relying on charity handouts, no respite, not even the late night shopping spree. Um, some, some people find that really relaxing. Tesco's or a supermarket at 10 o'clock at night doing the weekly shop. Fighting for the online shopping and, and slots to have them delivered. Um, keeping updated with the daily changes and guidance problems with accessing wi-fi and someone said here i've got four children in four different years 
who all need a computer to do their work at the same time. So not everybody has a particular device for every child that they have. And if also they're working from home as well, then you know that they could be needing five different devices and they may just not have that realistically. So there are lots of challenges there. Yeah, fighting for the online shopping, that was a big thing, wasn't it? Right at the yeah. beginning. And experiencing all sorts of feelings and emotions. The, the anxiety for me, Karen, right at the beginning was around the nice guidelines that came out about something called the frailty score. And my daughter was on um, level seven, which, which at wow. the time um, meant that if she was admitted to hospital, um, she, if there was a shortage of ventilators, she may not have been um, being ventilated. So my anxiety in those, it was like a sort of fear and panic um, for the first couple of weeks and tension, loneliness, isolation, um, anger, well, anger at the, <laughs> that it's never clear and uh, yeah. uh, confusion and then the resentment and again, and having shielding and having um, a daughter with com very complex needs. My daughter uh, was ventilated and on life support. She caught swine flu 11 years ago. Um, so that fear, you know, and, and then, like, you know, in, in fact, somebody's just delivered something now. And I'm like automatically thinking, oh, do we clean the gate? Um, bringing things in and and leaving the boxes outside the house that come on Amazon and just the whole confusion, worrying, yeah. worrying. My, I've got two kids who are going back down to London, so I don't know how we're going to manage without them. Depression. And you and I have talked a lot about the guilt, and you'll be talking mm. more about that, but the guilt. And for those of you who may recognise some of those emotions who are listening in, and watching this, you are not alone. Um, I feel that I've been on a roller coaster of emotions, um, and uh, and sometimes it's it's not been my children's behaviour; it's been my own behaviour that I think, oh gosh, yeah, that is yeah. really not on. So sometimes it's it's a it's about sort of taking a step back and and looking at it from a different perspective for ourselves. Our children will be okay when it comes to home education. They will catch up, um, you know. And we are learning lots of life skills together as a family. So you know, Lennon isn't like some of his school friends. He's not doing four or five hours a day, um, but what he is doing now are activities that actually he's really learning about himself about his own capabilities his confidence is through the roof um he's engaging more and doing so many other things um so you know we just do some core work with him but otherwise his life skills are i'm really proud of him actually and james is just uh, James is living his best life at the moment with the way he's really approached this i am so proud of james um in this time but we're all managing things in bite-sized chunks. And I think that's a real um, strategy to apply, which is to break things down into bite-sized chunks. Um, and that's been really useful for me. Uh, being aligned with our own expectations because we can have high expectations of ourselves or we can have expectations put upon us from other people, from external influences. Um, and we're not always in the position to meet other people's expectations. Um, so it's about being realistic and recognizing what we can do. Um, schools have said we, we can't do everything and be a parent. So we're actually being given a permission slip here. We're actually being given permission to go, do you know what? Um, right now, what's important is keeping a safe environment at home, emotional support at home, because this isn't a normal situation. We all know that there isn't. They're, they're being separated from their friends, their um, their normal routines, um, as as we are as well. So it's about we've had to get together and we've had to create new routines in the house with very quick transitions, and then we have to put safe edges in around that as well. So that's where the focus um, for many of us needs to stay. Um, giving ourselves a realistic and doable limit at the time spent trying to complete the day's homeschooling because you know 
I remember sort of in the beginning going, oh, you've got 24 hours at home. How can I not have time to do everything that I want to do? Um, and that was quite unrealistic, that expectation. And it wasn't reasonable for me because I don't know where my time goes in the day, but I still don't seem to have that much of it left over. Um, so creating that organisation in the daily life um, has been very important doing the things our children enjoy and are interested in because you've got to keep their engagement and coming and, and Katie and I were talking about this earlier um, and I think I've mentioned it already I'm their parent they see me as their parent they don't see me as the teacher so I've got to be really um, I've got to change my hat but do it in a way that they respect me in the, in that role and actually do that role and actually work with me and have um, some of that fun time education. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely doing doing uh, delivering it in a way that your children enjoy and are interested in. That's where you need to get creative, and that's where we need to be okay as well to be creative and put that extra energy in. And we're always going that extra mile, aren't we? <laughs> and managing our digital footprint. Um, that's yeah that's it's really draining working on the laptop all the time um mm. as well as them having downtime whether that be watching dvds having some telly time um however that that looks so it's definitely another another challenge has been that um digital footprint that we have um and having some boundaries around that but i'll mention that very briefly when we talk about boundaries in yeah. a moment and the digital footprint, my daughter um, uses sign language and she's been doing quite a few Zooms and she's absolutely shattered. I mean, mm -hmm. um, when she does a Zoom because she's got to watch an interpreter as well as trying to take everything in and like an hour and a half on a Zoom really ties her out. And she's been watching the most trashy programmes from about half past four onwards. But you know what? You know, it's just it's just yeah. all so different. And um, that, but that's that's helping her relax yes yeah and we're giving you a permission slip and you need to give yourself a permission slip to allow you to say well done because you are amazing you're 12 weeks down the line and we're just helping you with your own personal toolkit you're surviving and your child is learning remember you no one knows your child better than you do you're the expert in your child and you are the prime educator. Super work, excellent effort, well done. It is a journey, isn't it? It's, um, it's a long journey and just this, our survival to be able to do that really needs a, it is great effort. So yeah, we're looking at sort of our internal environment. So one of the pieces of work that I do with um, parents is about really recognizing how resourceful they are um, and what resources they have in their life. So just bear with me on this one. Um, the more depleted we are, the more overwhelmed we become. Um, the more resourced we are, the less overwhelmed we are. It's impossible to be really resourced and to be overwhelmed. So you are, all of you are already extremely resourceful, but we often forget that actually one of the biggest strategies that we have when it comes to being um, facing any type of challenge whether it be um, an emotional response to something that's really difficult um whether it be a practical um challenge that we've we've come up against you know there's a plumbing issue the car's broken down whatever that is um we are f often firefighting but actually you can prepare yourself with this one so what i what i do is and it's really worth taking some time when you can to get a piece of paper and write down all the people or as many as you can think of and don't worry if you get a bit of a block to start with keep that piece of paper out and add to it as you go uh, as you become uh, sort of tap into the idea of it so if you write down all the people that you've got in your life that 
are really helpful to you, whatever way that is. Um, but people that you can call upon, that you can try, and, and that can be, you know, anybody from the plumber. It doesn't have to be really close relatives and family. It's people that are, I don't like to use the word useful at this point when it comes to people, but you get what I mean by that. And um, people that are really helpful and, and useful to you in some way, and you are to them as well. So making that list down, and, and then underneath that, having another section which is what you've got so it's who you've got that can help you shift from a negative place to a positive place and then what you've got in your life that helps you shift from a negative place to a positive place forgetting that we're in um a, a, this lockdown situation at the moment but so you know for example some of my what have i got that helps me is i you know i'm a big runner so running helps me no end um listening to music reading a book um going out for walks having a cup of coffee with a friend and some downtime i've got some really beautiful pictures up in the house they're really happy pictures they're they've been of holidays that i've had so it really creates that nice vibe um of, of happy memories and looking at them helps me shift from a negative place to a positive place it can be anything from your faith to activities to um items to memories even um it can be something that you put in the future so if i get through today if i can get through today then tonight i'm going to have a glass of wine and that can become an anchor so as soon as you face a problem um or a challenge or some kind of obstacle whatever that is one of the first things you ask yourself is who have I got that can help me right now? What have I got that can help me right now? And it's because it's very easy when we're in, when we're tired, when we're, when we're, when we're exhausted, when we're depleted in some way, deficient in, in, in some way, we can feel stressed and overwhelmed. And it can just be another thing that has just happened. And it can feel like the straw that's broken the donkey's back. And we can go into our chimp brain, um, which is a part of our brain that holds all our emotions. It's where we react from we don't respond from there we react from there we can just sort of go off a pizza I've had enough um, it's that kind of part of our brain that initially responds where if you can ask yourself what have I got right now that can help me who have I got in my life right now that can help me and that could be do I need to get on YouTube do I need to get on social media does anybody know her um, so whatever it is as soon as you do that your brain switches into a frontal part of your brain, which is very solution focused, and it likes that challenge. And that in itself is one of the biggest strategies that can pull you out of stress and pull you out of overwhelm. And it's a really powerful, um, em empowering strategy to, to use. But also recognizing that there is this biomechanical feedback internal and external so our internal and external environment they coexist so when one's challenged so if our internally we're feeling really quite um, challenged and unmanaged um, it's all feeling disorganized and chaotic and we and we're not looking after ourselves or acknowledging that um, or dismiss or minimize how we're feeling what can happen is we can then spill out. Um, so our, we can kind of spill out our emotions. We can become frustrated, we can become agitated, or we can become withdrawn or sad or, or however that looks. So it's really important that we check in and go, you know, how am I feeling right now? Or, you know, I feel like this. Well, what do I need to do to shift that? I need to stand on my doorstep with the door shut behind me for a couple of minutes having a cup of tea. Um, it, it doesn't have to be really massive, but it could just be something where you can just exhale and as you exhale, you drop your shoulders and you just feel your body relax a little bit. But also with our external environment, um, if our external environment is chaotic, now um, globally it is, um, as a country it is, um, as a community it can feel like that as well and inside our house can feel like that. So. If our external environment is is feeling um, unsafe or wobbly or unsure or there's no edges or it's just chaotic in the house and it's just like nobody can move for things everywhere, that in itself can also make uh, influences to feel anxious. So it is about looking after our internal and external environment as much as we can. 
Um, so yeah, what do I need right now to be in the right space, in the right headspace to, to deliver whatever it is that you want to deliver on or achieve whatever you want to achieve? Do you want to move on to the next slide? The boundary. Oh, I've just had a drink and it's just gone down the wrong way. <clears throat> Are you all right to do this? Yeah, the boundaries, yeah, no problem. So boundaries are really important. They help us organise. It's what's okay for us, what's not okay for us. And I don't know about you, but certainly my boundaries have been really challenged. Um, you know, not being able to go out freely, um, not be able to do, you know, my own food shopping or do the hobbies and things that I like to do. Um, the other one also is... Lennon and James having much more screen time than I would normally be okay with but and I didn't realize sort of how that was making me feel until I recognized that it's because a lot of this was pushing pushing my boundaries so my yes my no what's okay what's not okay the line that I normally draw um, so it's about yeah recognizing at the moment is what are your boundaries that are being challenged maybe you're not getting enough personal space because you're not getting the, the, the you know when my boys go off to school in the day i'm like it's fantastic i've got six hours to kind of have some downtime and chill time and me time to to do what it is that i want to do i'm not getting that i'm not getting that personal space because they're like my little shadows at the moment um so it's it it is about recognizing what it is that you need and and there is going to be some adaption right now but it's recognizing that it is just for right now and it's a ring fence time i know we don't know what that time is um but it's negotiating with our boundaries without disempowering ourselves recognizing that it's short term and whatever the new normal looks like um, those boundaries can be adapted again um, one of the boundaries i put in place is there is a ring fence bit of time in the day which is just mine um and it's non-interrupted and that's you know and that's a real gift that i've needed because i am an introvert um and as much as i can perform and be the clown in the house and entertain and and cook and clean and deliver on everything that needs to be delivered i need to have some plug-in time I would normally have that frequently um, before COVID-19. It was never in question. Now I don't. And that was one of the big stress points for me was not having my own plug-in time where I could go off in my little cave and just read a book for half an hour um, and come back. And now I can do that. I've negotiated that. And now I can do that. I'm much, I'm much more relaxed. So it's looking at what what boundaries are being challenged of yours at the moment and and thinking how you can how you can negotiate on that um for short term and and that's really important for our health because boundaries are about our self-worth um if we've got it's very easy to get baggy boundaries as 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 i call them um so sometimes they just need strengthening up or just renegotiating for for a short time and recognizing that thanks katie so what home education can mean in reality it could be learning new life skills such as toileting for preschool children we heard a great story from the northeast about youtube and this young man who's been making his own videos and learning how to do youtube it's about being really person-centered and we've said before there's no point trying to encourage your child to do the things they're not interested in and don't like doing recognizing where the pressure comes from to do things and that stress and that actually may be coming from ourselves and when your child does something really well praise yourself as much as you praise your child even if it's a glass of wine at the end of the day let your child know if you don't know how to do a topic or don't understand a question your child can help and let them be your teacher. And you've talked about, Karen, about changing from being a parent to a teacher. And that's just such a difficult transition for, for most of us. One of the joys for us has been sharing new activities together. Um, and this is me and my daughter. And for years, we wanted to do adaptable yoga a wheelchair yoga and now you know we know everything's like you can find everything online so we've 
we found a teacher a yoga teacher who has a session at 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning for an hour and she's absolutely wonderful um, and we now follow her on Facebook and that says doing our hours yoga on a Saturday morning together um, and that's really been great it's helped Nadia so much with her posture and her balance um, and it's it's been a lovely thing to share we found that online and I'm sure a lot of you will have been inundated with there's a bit of background noise i can hear sorry um yeah the, you've been inundated with links we're linked out aren't we i've just got you'd be able to see this later but i've just put plenty of links the special needs resources there's lego there's climate change links there's everything from keep fit music sessions like our yoga session there are so many resources and links. You've just got to Google, you've got to go on contacts, um, their website. There's links coming out of our ears, isn't there? Natural England have got some wonderful links. There's the child with the worm in the garden. But as a result, our feelings are very mixed. And parents have said that they've been bombarded with websites to try out. And then I feel a failure when I haven't done them. And there's actually too many great ideas of things that we should be doing. I'm just overwhelmed with the Facebook pages. There's a new Facebook page that's really, really helpful that I've been on. Um, and every day there's like dozens of people posting extra links. There's idea after idea. It's all online. My school has been really poor, actually, of giving out hard copies of things to do. Um, and that's been something in our community. There's, uh, we've actually been producing like art, art packs. One of the local organisations been putting together art packs. And parents have been so happy with pen and crayon and bits of paper and colouring and crafty ideas rather than the online. Uh, parents said, I wish I had more energy to filter out all the links, but I'm so stressed most of the time and trying to manage everything else. So even trying to go in a link after link to try and understand the curriculum, whatever you're trying to do, the homeschooling. And then taking aside the links and the, all the Wi-Fi and the Internet, it's also about just being really creative. And a parent said we've curled each other's hair. We've done some baking and we're measuring out. I just can't be bothered with the homework. And the teacher rang last week to check if everything's okay and she was laid back. At the end of the day, if the kids are happy, then that's the main thing. It wasn't too bad at first for the first couple of days. And then the work they were giving us, Oliver got fed up of coloring, Samantha got fed up of no structure and was doing what she wanted. Instead, I've been doing practical skills like telling the time, tying shoelaces, watching TV. We've made aqua beads. We've been out for more walks than usual. Shopping with two kids is such hard work. It's a major operation. Finally, we get to the door and we've got to wait until they let us in. The kids like the one-way system and it's now become part of our weekly schedule. We've set up a group for parents and kids that meets once a week and that's on Zoom, and we set ourselves a challenge at the end of the session. Something like, bring back to the next session something about your favourite place or your favourite food. It's like a show and tell. One parent said they've been working on my child's individual education plan and what targets they have, and one of them was about occupational therapy. So we've been using the trampoline in the garden. My child has a real thing about worms and slugs in the garden and we've turned his fixation into a learning opportunity. So just taking some of the top tips from bringing us together families that have contributed to this is um, setting a simple schedule and routine and set a realistic time for learning. Um, as, we, as, as, as Katie said earlier, we know our children best and um, we, for example, James's best time is six o'clock in the morning till about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, Lennon is from around 10, he's a bit of a late starter. Um, so it's about knowing, I know my child's best time for learning and so putting the routine around them for that. 
reading freely, exercising together, cleaning the house together. Well, I do that on my own, but yeah, cleaning the house together. It's really great to have um, everybody involved in those kind of activities. Healthy snacks and baking, um, solve real life math problems. Um, it's, for some, sometimes it's much easier to do real life solution focused kind of looking at problems rather than sitting with that textbook or sitting with that that set kind of um online schedule so it, sometimes it is about just set the a real life problem and see and work it out together show them how to work it out helping them to find different ways to resource themselves so building their resources up in that way breaking down any task into its basic parts just bringing things back to simple, um, unplug non-screen time, fresh air and a, and a walk, um, if, if that's possible. Try to see this um, peculiar, weird and peculiar time together as an opportunity. Okay, um, overall, it might not be one big opportunity, but look for the opportunities within it and use those as anchors to, to feel, um, feel a bit settled inside. And to breathe. Um, now, I know it sounds really daft saying that, but metaphorically, we can hold our breath for what can feel like days and weeks where our body's really stiff and tight. And if we can just, and on that exhale, just really focus, like I mentioned earlier, on just dropping your shoulders, we can find that um, as our bodies become stressed, our shoulders become an extension of our ears rather than an extension of our neck because we hold a lot of tension in there. We don't realize how much we're carrying. So just, yeah, just recognizing every now and again and just drop those shoulders down and just feel yourself settle in um, and recognize that hopefully at some point this will end and whatever it looks like hopefully we'll transition and stay together as a community so keep connected with the community so that we can all do this by supporting each other um and definitely those rewards and that self-care at the end of the day or, or however that looks for you and remember self-care doesn't have to be something really really massive that could just be having a 10 minute shower on your own. That could just be having a little bit of time on the bench outside in the garden, uninterrupted. Whatever you need, it can be five minutes, it can be 20 minutes, it's, you know, whatever it is that you need. But it is essential that you put yourself somewhere on that priority list in order to keep giving out in a situation like this, especially when we don't quite know or we don't know when it's going to end. So, you, please recognize that you are extremely important. Yeah, it's looking after yourself. We are the educators. The fresh air and the walks um, is, is, has, been, has been great to be able to get out, although my daughter is so scared um, when she's out and so wary of, of seeing other people. So we, we um, not, not this weekend, the weekend before we went down to Shifton Park, which is, isn't far from us, and we went in the car and we left the house about half past seven um, and we got to the car park at eight in the morning and she was like really worrying that there might be somebody around. Um, and we, we went to go and look at the, the goslings and the ducklings and it was just so, it's so special and so beautiful, but there was nobody in the car park at eight in the morning, <laughs> just our big wheelchair accessible van. Um, and you know you, that being able to connect with the nature and um, and see nature around was was an education in itself. Um, and the seasons that we've had and the the flowers that we've had through and it's been here we've had bluebells we've had rhododendrons, um, you know, so in the hedgerows. So for me, that Karen, that's been my big thing has been the fresh air and a walk. But then. Just that, that fear at the same time that it's not safe and social distancing. And if you see anybody to be mm, making sure you've got yeah, the distance. Sure. Just about at the end and um, our next steps. We do hope you've got something out of this session and that uh, also that you'll be able to breathe a little bit. This has been some time for you tonight. And it's really, really, we know you've made an effort to be here. 
we've got a session on the 17th of June at 7 p.m. which if there are questions that have been asked you've got now you've got a couple of minutes just to write anything in the question section um, that you'd like us to to think about for the next session and uh, on the 17th of June we're going to have two hours it'll be a discussion it'll be the sharing of stories it's what works for us and some laughter and we'd love you to join us we'll bring a brew or a glass of wine or a glass of water and if you'd like to register your interest in the workshop please email Ellie who's been great at organizing all this and big thanks to contact for, for having this session um, and if you'd like to get in contact with us at bringing us together there's my email and we've got a Facebook group which we've been sharing some of these challenges and the achievements um, and what works that's all been done through social media and we've been putting posts up and got lots of response so we really do hope that you've got something out of tonight but yeah you can just have a few minutes now before we end if you'd just like to put anything in the comments and suggestions and questions so I'll give you and a bit the, of time. On the 17th we'll be looking at tips um, on on homeschooling um, looking at being more creative in that so we'll have much more time to look at creative homeschooling tips great so, yeah it'd be great if you could come to that as well and thank you thank you for attending with us today so a huge thanks to you all you have got a minute or so just to be able to put in the questions and karen how are you how do you feel and how are you going to be tomorrow with your homeschooling uh yeah um we've got our little schedule set out and also i've set um lennon the task of helping me break down some really good homeschooling tips from his point of view um so now we've covered the baseline in in all of this um and looking after yourself as the person as the as the parent um, we're getting the kids involved in some real top tips now. So next week we'll be able to share some of those with you. So it's really great we're getting the kids involved on that. Fantastic, fantastic. And we're looking through old photographs and we're writing blogs tomorrow, um, blogs about our camping holiday. So we've been through our big box of photographs and we're like going to be yeah, writing a blog. We've done one about France and now it's going to be our camping holiday in Spain tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. So, <laughs> and good, good luck, everybody. And we really hope you'll join us on the 17th. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Bye for now.